There's a story to be told, a future to be told. There is more to who we are than what they hear. We have love in our soul, fire in our bones. We've got everything it takes to make it here. There's much more within our soil, more than just our oil. We can grow the food to feed the whole world. Agriculture is the key, there's treasure in the trees. The time is now, the land is green, wealth is here. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Please, can you hear me? You're welcome to this uh, session three, the last session for the day. Please, if you can hear me, kindly send a message in the chat uh, box. Thank you very much. Please send an image in the chat box if you can hear me, so that I'm sure. We're waiting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sadatu Emilio Ju. Damilari, thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I think today we've been experiencing a bit of um, internet network uh, challenges and the same with our panelists. Uh, so we're just trying to hang on, hold on rather, for them to be able to join. It's um, a bit of internet issues. Well, thank you so much. So while we're waiting, would want to find out, are you just joining for the first time? Are you joining the business of our culture for the first time? Or you have been on other sessions, maybe the session we had today, uh, we just concluded rather on harvest to markets or the session on the business of nutrition and lifestyle, or it's your first time. So we'd like to find out, is it your first time or you're a returning customer, as they say? 
So please uh, type in the chat room, whether it's on um, YouTube or Facebook or, or, or here on the Zoom. We'd like to hear from you. Thank you so much. So we're hanging on, let's just find out. Is it your first time? So if it's your first time, just say first time. If it's your second time or, you know, second time, return in. Thank you, Ulubinga Akiola. Thank you so much. Hope it has been value for your time all through this session. Thank you. Okay, one of our panel return in. I did see a lot today. Thank you. Zoom first. Awesome. Okay, maybe you have been on another um, uh, platform. Thank you. First time joining the meeting. Thank you so much, return in. Oh, that's, you know, so delightful to hear. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, so I don't take uh, too much of your time. This is my first time and I saw it on YouTube. Awesome, Femi Ogunfui, thank you so much. Great, great. We're happy to have you here, returning. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, you know, for joining, whether it's the first time or returning. We're delighted, we're delighted. Oh, great, Hamidu Sulaiman. It's, be, it's not my first time. Actually, I have been on all the sessions starting today. And we hope that it has been value for your time. We're happy to have you. Thank you for joining and thank you for returning. Please share the links with your colleagues, with your friends uh, and loved ones. You know, if, I, if you have uh, gained a lot from this uh, uh, masterclass, we believe that you have. So would appreciate it if you could ju just spread the news. Thank you so much. You're welcome to the third session for today, which is the fifth uh, value chain. Wow. We sat there yesterday and all of a sudden, out of eight, well, not all of a sudden, actually, but out of eight, we've uh, covered, well, about covering the fifth value chain for the Business of Agriculture Masterclass. We are happy to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, for joining us. We have uh, people joining us on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much for joining. Um, it it's, you know, encourages us and tells us that oh, we all value knowledge. We all value you know, capacity building. And of course, it's all about the money at the end of the day. So it's how will this convert to money for us or profits for us at the end of the day. So thank you so much. Um, we have... Um, um, FGs, you know, on YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, I said LinkedIn, my apologies, on Zoom and on Facebook. That's to tell you I'm a LinkedIn person. <laughs> on Facebook and on Zoom. So please, we, you know, it's quiet when you're hosting um, uh, a virtual session. It's usually quiet, just you and you're wondering, okay, are people hearing me or not? So please, we'd like some excitement when it's time to heal our uh, panelists or to just say thank you to encourage them would like to hear from you in quotes via our emojis so please um let's maximize it we also have the chat box if you're joining us on zoom we have the chat box you can comment you know on it but if you have questions so that your questions are not lost in transit please send them send them in the q and a set, uh, box so that we can you know pick them up um, as we go. So we're diving right into the sessions for today. I'm not the moderator for the day. Uh, we have with us Mr. Peter Kokwala, um, a consultant management development uh, specialist with the AMTI Agricultural and Rural Management Training Institute. He will be moderating the session, uh, the third session for the day, which is unlocking uh, profitable ventures in, in uh, poultry and in pigry, that's feather, fur, and fortune. Uh, we've had sessions on uh, vegetable farming. We're going to have another on aquaculture tomorrow. And you know, we'll be, have, we'll be taking some other sessions as well. So um, stay glued, spread the word as well so that we can have more people join in because we're conscious of time and we value your own time, especially everyone that has taken the opportunity, the, you know, the opportunity to come in early. Uh, we're going into it right away. So I'll be handing over to Mr. Peter Popola. He'll be introducing our um, panelists for the day. Um, and then we would uh, go into their presentation. So our panelists for today, both of them have presentations. You can tell they are practicing farmers and um, teachers, I guess, or trainers, 
you know, I'd like to, I'd like to call. So um, I, I hand over to Mr. Peter Popola. Thank you so much. I have an engaging and enlightening session. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Tosin. I'd like to stand on existing protocol to welcome uh, our dear participants to this uh, very wonderful and important uh, session on the business of agriculture. Cluster five have been uh, anchored by the United Nations Private Sector Advisory Service uh, Group, PSAG, that is uh, working on uh, agricultural and uh, manufacturing sector. We move straight to the business of the day. Uh, we will be considering a very important topic titled Feather for and Fortune, Unlocking Profits in Livestock Ventures, the case study of poultry and pigry agribusiness enterprise. So we have uh, the pleasure to have in our midst this afternoon two panelists. Uh, starting with uh, Mr. Adelowo Ola Banji Joseph, who is the National Sales Manager of AMO Bayern Nigeria Limited. And also joining uh, us in this session, again, is uh, Ambassador Adeniyi Tolabumi, who is uh, the founder and co Green Impact Africa Initiative uh, on Pigri. So we take their profile, profile of uh, Adelowo, Mr. Adelowo Labanji Joseph. Mr. Adelowo Labanji is an experienced customer satisfaction manager with a demonstrated history of working in the Nigerian poultry industry. He is skilled in animal husbandry, sales and marketing of poultry and agro highlight products. He has a Bachelor of Technology, in animal production and health from Federal University of Technology at Kure, Nigeria. He holds two master's degrees, master in business administration, MBA marketing from Ladu Kiakintola University of Gumosho, Oyo State, and a master in animal production and management from the University of Ibadan. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, we are done. So I will uh, also be reading the profile of Ambassador Adeniyi Sholabomi. Adeniyi Sholabomi is an Israeli trained agribusiness development value chain expert with passion for agricultural advocacy and huge experience in agricultural advisory services. He is an agribusiness development coach, a certified value chain expert, advocate for youth in agribusiness, agro ambassador, urban farm promoter, and a change agent with over a decade experience in the agricultural sector. He has trained over 2,500 youth and women through his periodical free on the farm agribusiness empowerment program. Adeni Ishola, has been one of the strong voice in advocating for agribusiness development in Nigeria through youth inclusion in agriculture policy making. He is a member of numerous professional and international associations and institutions. And institutions. Sola has served as a consultant to several local and international institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to bring on stage these two very important personalities, industry experts, and professionals in the business of uh, livestock uh, agribusiness industry in Nigeria. So I want us to encourage these two distinguished uh, panelists in our midst, Mr. Adilowo Olabanji Joseph and uh, Ambassador Adeni Isholabumi. Can we please welcome them on stage uh, with uh, our emote uh, chats? with our chat saying welcome on the YouTube platform, on the Facebook platform, on the Zoom platform. Let's welcome these two distinguished personalities in our midst. It is a pleasure to have them 
to share from their wealth of experience. And it's an opportunity for us to also dig deeper into the business of uh, livestock ag agribusiness uh, venture in Nigeria. You are welcome. Yes. That's Thank you. Good. You are welcome. Uh, Mr. Adela Wola Banji Joseph, are you on stage? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. You are welcome. And uh, Ambassador Adeniyi Swalabumi, are you on stage? Yeah, thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Oh, okay, great, 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 great. Yeah, we are pleased to welcome you, having you talk to us uh, this afternoon on uh, Feather Fall and Fortune Unlocking Profit in Livestock Ventures, the case study of a uh, Poultry for Mr. Dilawola Banji Joseph and the case study of a uh, pigri for Ambassador Adeni Isolabumi. Uh, to start with Mr. Dilawola Banji Joseph. Yes, sir. We'd like, we like to hear from you. Yes, before your presentation, how did uh, the journey started in one minute? How did the journey to the poultry industry started in one minute? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, my journey into the poultry world started way back to 20, 2003 uh, when I gained admission into Federal University of Technology at Kure to study animal production and health. And upon, uh, during the course of study, I had the opportunity to have my industrial training at uh, the Dura Farms Nigeria Limited at uh, Lobo in Ogun State. Okay. Then where I developed uh, the practical knowledge uh, for the technical know-how in the poultry world. Then I had the opportunity of working with Hamo being Nigeria Limited after my um, study, after my service here, back way back from 2011, which I've been with them uh, undergoing studies and uh, training. And I've worked across um, about 28 states in Nigeria teaching farmers and also educating farmers in the world of poultry in ensuring that they get, uh, they make profit in their business. So I've been in the business of feed, uh, poultry feed and DOC, which are the best uh, in poultry world. So, so far Thank so you. good, that's my journey, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It is interesting to note that you've been in this sector for uh, 20 years. 20 years is not a joke. No doubt that uh, we you have been selected to interact with us in this uh, very important session today. You are welcome, sir. And uh, to you, Ambassador Solabumi, we'd like to hear from you how did uh, your journey started into the piggly industry? Okay, good afternoon uh, once again. Uh, for me, um, I came into the agribusiness um, industry, say around 15 years ago. So Mr. Lambaji is my senior colleague. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I'm purely into more of um, general agri, uh, which includes uh, livestock, crops, and uh, value addition. So I'm one of those that really believe in the total uh, value chain. I've been around um, solutions across value chain. So practically, uh, pig, uh, eight years, eight years, and what gave birth to that that was when we were having a lot of waste in the, in one of our farm, which is cassava planting farm. And um, I had the training in, um, in Uganda, where I discovered how you can feed your uh, animal with um, your cassava waste and even the stem of your plantain. That was what gave birth to, to me going into, into Pigree. And um, I built one of the cleanest um, pen uh, pig pen in, in the country, zero, zero smell. And um, it has been there for like eight years and it's still doing fine in Abekuta. Interesting, sir. You are welcome. We are glad to know that uh, you've been in the business of uh, agriculture for almost uh, 15 years, but uh, specifically the business of uh, Pigri at the business venture has been for eight years. Yes, we know that it's a link up with uh, agricultural enterprises and uh, specifically Pigri, the focus of our session today. And we are glad to know that you are vast in the area of agricultural value chain. 
you are welcome on stage. At this time, we would like to bring in uh, the first presentation of today. That's the presentation of Mr. Delo Wolabanji Joseph. Can uh, we share the slide? If uh, we can do each of the presentations in, uh, we can do this in uh, 10, 10 minutes, 10, 10 minutes to appreciate it so that we accommodate uh, for more questions and uh, feedback from our participants. So you are welcome on stage, sir, Mr. Dilo Wolabanji. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, topic on lawful property, livestock uh, ventures, uh, poultry. Um, just like I've been introduced, uh, objective of the training, I uh, will be very brief with this. Uh, the objective of, of the training has to do with a brief overview of poultry production in Nigeria, then importance of poultry production, types of poultry production and housing, uh, types of feed needed for different poultry bears and the economics of production. Uh, where I would like to dwell much is on the economics of production. Uh, the poultry uh, has been referred to a wide range of uh, bears of various species that are generally lived or dressed, that is keyed and prepared for sales. Uh, it involves chicken, turkey, uh, duck, geese, and uh, pigeons, as many as possible you have there. Um, poultry is one of the fastest growing segments of livestock agricultural sector that contributes a major share in terms of protein supplementation for egg and meat, even for the less, um, for, for some of our, our subsistence farmers that have, uh, that don't really have uh, much, they could still have access to both uh, meat and uh, eggs via the poultry industry. Next, please. Uh, for the purpose of this uh, training, I'll just look at, uh, we're looking at three major areas. We're looking at the laying breeds. We're looking at the meat breed and the dual purpose. Uh, for many people, we are very familiar with the laying and the meat breed, which is the broiler and the layer. But there's another particular breed of bears in the poultry industry. We call it a uh, noiler. Noiler and hardy bears are uh, their dual purpose bed. You can use them for both meat and they lay eggs and majorly uh, they require low technology in the process of rearing these noiler beds. Why do we have, why do we need uh, poultry production? We need poultry production for security, for health benefit, and to bring about um, job creation, food job creation in terms of uh, you are a young graduate that wants to go into poultry, want to go into agriculture, and you feel that um, I don't have much money, you can still do poultry production. So it brings a lot of uh, employment opportunities for individuals at various level of education and skills. Doesn't matter if you're a graduate, if you're a secondary school, a school start holder, or a primary school holder, in as much you have the passion for the job, you are good to go. And the industry has a wide range of jobs opportunity from the farming itself to the marketing, distribution, and processing. So it has a lot of value chain in, in, uh, for job creation. Next slide, please. Uh, for the meat uh, production, we have uh, the environmental control pen and uh, the open-sided pen for broiler production. Uh, this one, the environmental control pen is an advanced uh, way of uh, rearing broiler, which is purposely for meat. And we have the open-sided ones. Uh, please don't be discouraged about this quantity of bears. We have them in smaller size. You can do as slow as 50, 200, which we'll be discussing the economics of production as we go. And that is where I would like to dwell more. But we have this different housing for for broiler production, we have the environmental control, which the feeding of feed, uh, the feeding of the feeds, the water line and everything is controlled. The temperature, the humidity is controlled, uh, is automated right 
there on a panel which monitors the health status of the bed. Whereas you have the open side even where you walk in, you have to feed them uh, manually. Then for we have some of these system is uh, semi automated where you have the drink, uh, the drink, uh, the the lines for drinker. Then the noila beds and you have the layer beds and the learner beds here yeah, where you can easily rear this. Uh, for the noila bed because they are hardy, you can easily rear them maybe in a semi-intensive or, or intensive method, depending on the capacity you are coming. Also for the layers, the layer is the most, um, the most, uh, I don't want to say difficult, the most, the, the, the best that has to do with technical uh, aspect of which, which requires more technicality in terms of uh, the bed, in terms of raising, in terms of vaccination and the likes. Uh, just like I said, the housing, the intensive cage system where you have them in the cages. And it's it, this one is, uh, it, the constraint is that you, you hardly go on this with a low scale. The cost of installation of those battery cages and the likes are on the high side. Um, and the advantages of the intensive uh, uh, system is that um, it gives you a very high outage uh, output because in terms of production, you have a high production compared to other method of uh, uh, system of rearing. In the intensive system, you provide everything, virtually everything, the business from the, from you, you control the, uh, the type of heat that comes into the house, the reflection of light, the water and everything you control for the intensive. So it is, it is capital intensive for intensive, um, system of rearing there. The same intensive or floor rearing, you can have them where you have, just like I showed on the uh, broiler production, where you have them on the floor and you have them semi-intensive. For example, the cost of infrastructure is, mo is moderate and the boat, you can have them to grace and you provide the space and facility to provide and patch feeders and feeding troughs. And we have the extensive grazing where you have, uh, the investment is relatively low. You can have them out double, for this extensive uh, system of production, uh, I only recommend this for the Noila beds, which are because they are hardy. Uh, an example, the Noila bed is an, uh, is an advancement on our general beds that we know, the local beds that we have in the villages. Like So the Noila bed is an advanced uh, uh, research work on those beds. You know, they are hardy, they are strong, they are very rugged. So likewise, the, we have to input those genetic uh, factors, advantage of those bears and make sure that for the Noila bears, you can get very good flesh at the, in terms of meat and they give you very good amount of eggs on a daily basis. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah, for the economics of production, which is where I want us to really discuss about, uh, but before discussing about uh, the economics of production, please go up, please. The first one, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for the economics of production, for all the poultry business that you can think of, there are six major things that really determines uh, what you have to get, how you, what your economics will be. And those and what determines them are, uh, I will list them. They are not on the slide. I'll just have to list them for you. You talk about the infrastructure, the housing, that is the pen facility, which you have to house your bed. Um, for the layers, if you have a wrong infrastructure in terms of orientation, so you are likely to have a reduced uh, production output due to the fact that um, there is a standard uh, orientation in which you have to build your bed, uh, your penthouse. So, so the east-west location. So, if you miss that, you are going to have um, a marginal, um, a marginal reduce in production, which will affect your bottom line. So, your orientation it matters most in terms of uh, uh, for layers, even for the broilers. If uh, the the height of the roof is not high enough, that allows free flow of air into the penthouse, that could affect 
your production or also for broiler uh, beds when the beds when the uh, the penthouse is choky or you don't have enough space you don't have enough uh, room for ventilation or beds those things affect production and the production affects your net profit at the end of the day which i will show briefly and also we have the human personnel uh, the human personnel in terms of staff with ferritin and incentives uh, we've had uh, cases of where we have two three farmers in the same location the same condition weather condition the pain the, the same pain structure and they have different production output this is uh, based on the fact that the personnel involved in handling this bed themselves uh, could make or mar the business. So if the uh, personnel are well incentivized, it could help at the long run in the bottom line of your production. Also, um, if they are not well incentivized, you know, it could result to pilfering that is stealing some of your uh, produce. Maybe if you are doing layers in terms of your egg, you see that you are having this zigzag uh, production every day because of preferring. Uh, in case of uh, production, just like I said, if they are well incentivized, they take uh, good care of those beds because they are the, always the first point of contact to the beds. They see the beds, any changes in the beds uh, um, body system, they notice in terms of physics, in terms of maybe probably they are not heating properly because they are well incentivized. They have your interest at heart, they will take care of the best. So different personnel would have an effect on your bottom line. Also, the major one is the input, what you put in into the business, your DOC, your feed, your drugs and vaccine, your source, the source which you get them from, determines what if you are going to be successful in the business. If your source of uh, DOC, that is DO chicks, from the actual you are getting, if it's not good, you are likely not to be successful at the end of the day. That is why you see a lot of people will tell you that I, I have a uh, hundred chickens at the end of the day, or they all died. The question is, where do you get your best from? The source of your DOC matters most. Then the feed, what type of feed are you feeding those beds? Then your what source of water, the water you are giving to your best, can you drink it yourself? If you can't drink that water, it is not good for your beds. Your drugs and medication and vaccines, where do you get them from? You have a lot of situations whereby you have a vaccine failure in farms. The source of that vaccine could mar the business as a whole. We have seen a lot of cases of a vaccine failure, and you have about 10 to 10,000 of beds being wiped out due to failure of vaccine. So, and failure of vaccine has to do with storage and handling from the manufacturer to the uh, retailer, to the distributor to the retailer and to the farmer. So your source of vaccine really matters what you could mind your business. Also, management, the technical know-how and monitoring could also be a factor in all these economies of production that we want to talk about. So I've talked about the infrastructure, the human personnel, the input, your DOC feed, uh, drugs and vaccine. Then the management, technical know-how. If you are raising your broilers, you know they have to be fed at libitum. You know you have to monitor them. You have to do sorting. You have to do all those things for you to achieve their targeted weight. For these bears, uh, layers, you'll be talking about uh, X production. But for meat, you talk about weight. So for you to meet up with the required meat for the meat uh, production, which is the broiler meat, you have to do a proper monitoring of those beds, okay, uh, frequent uh, sorting to ensure that, okay, what is the weight, taking the measurement, okay, what is the specified weight, what are we achieving, are we behind schedule, are we closer? Uh, also, your feed also will determine in this part of this uh, business for broiler. There are several times that where you buy feed, the cost of feed doesn't determine what you get. At times you buy expensive feed and you feed less and you all see that in the cost of uh, this uh, economics of production. And even for your layer also, your feed determines your production. If you're feeding a very quality, high quality feed that, is, that has a well-balanced ratio of uh, required, requirement for your beds, definitely you are good to go. 
if you decide to cut corners and try to reduce the cost of feed, one thing about poultry business is garbage in, garbage out. What you give to the best, they give to you. The best are the most selfish human being on the planet else. So what they first do is that they first take in what they need for their body consumption. After body maintenance, they now decide to give you your own reward, which is the head for any uh, for the layer producer and more meat for the broiler producer. Also for the noiler, it goes in or so the, all this affect then your target market. A lot of people go into this business without having a target market in mind or an agreed prices. And I'll quickly explain this. If you are going before you start a business, you need to understand. Okay, I want to sell. I want to go into meat production. So definitely, I'm going into broiler or noiler production. And if I'm going to this business, where do I want to sell my product to? Am I going to just sell it to people that will just come and pack? Or do I want to go into processing? You need to know that your target market, you need to understand the prices so that when you do your economies of production, from the onset, you can know that all things being equal, this is what my uh, market uh, price, this is what my um, profit margin will be. And also your source of fund. For majority of us that we, we know we are not uh, financially buoyant to do this business, some of us resort to alternate source of fund, which is uh, the financial market you try to borrow. So you need to understand, okay, what interest rate am I borrowing from? From your economics of production, if I'm borrowing at 10% interest rate, if I'm borrowing at 15% interest rate, if I'm borrowing at 20-22% uh, interest rate, will I be able to succeed at the end of the year with this money that I'm borrowing? So your economics of production will show you that, okay, you are good to go and you are good to go for this business. So going back to this, I, I have this template. I don't know if my engineers in the house could help me. do This is uh, economics of production for a 1,000, a 800 uh, broiler production. Uh, for this uh, economics of production, you have all the input from the left corner from my side here. You have all the input, the cost of DOC. You have the cost of DOC, you have the cost of uh, feed. And you can see that it is a unit price. You know, this unit price, assuming you are buying your your your, bear, your feed for, let me say 10,500 for per bag. You know, a bag is 25 kg. So you have to divide that by 25 kg so that you can have, yes, Thank you, Mr. Emilio Judam Larry. Uh, I was just trying to do some one or two something. So you can, with this economies of production, you can easily change is a is a is a is an uh, Excel calculator. So which will be sending across um, the participant. I I think uh, the organizers can find a way around that if you request for this, or you can easily contact me for 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 the economies of production, which I will avail to you. If you change the quantity, all these uh, variables will change based on what we have there. Then the most important thing for you as a, uh, the most important thing for you as a broiler farmer, uh, on the left side of that screen, you have the FCR, your FCR, the average weight, your total feed, then your mortality percentage, the live beds, they are very, very, very important. They are very, very important if you want to get it right. These are the metrics that determines your success. If your feed conversion ratio is higher, that means you have a, for example, you have an average body weight of uh, maybe uh, 2.1 kg, and you have, your total feed fed is about 3.5 kg of feed fed. That means you are good to go. Then you look at the- A minute the more, sir. Hello? A minute more. Okay. You look at the buy by uh, clause, you have a uh, 1,200. With these metrics, you can see that um, your cost of uh, production at the end of the day, you see that the profit by cycle for this 800 bed is about uh, 174,000. Then the percentage of profit is 9.2%. So if you are doing this, and one thing about broiler production is that for the broiler production, you can do this cycle for four to five times in a year. So even if you are getting an interest loan of 15% uh, or 20%, you 
your forty two percent percentage annum to shows that you are good to go with this business. Uh, now let me just run down through the layer production. I have the economics of production for we the layers. Can just say, we can just begin to summarize. We still have another session. Okay, okay. Yes, we know uh, you have uh, so much for us. Yes, uh, the, uh, the economics of production, I, I believe questions will come in for, yes. for that. Uh, from the economics of production for the layers, at the moment, the cost of production, I have it. Please, can you just dis uh, display the second economics of production? Okay, thank you very much. This is what it costs you to, dis uh, to rear your uh, layers from day old to break even point at 22, uh, 28 weeks. Uh, if we have other questions, I think we can, I can give you better breakdown from the question and answers as the time goes on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Delawo Olabanji for an helpful and stimulating presentation. Uh, while you were presenting, you made uh, some valid points that is already arousing uh, questions and comments, but uh, in the meantime, we will uh, bring on stage now the presentation of uh, Ambassador Deniji Sholabumi. So okay. we can begin to make use of uh, the chat uh, box for participants on the Zoom platform. But okay, no, the question and answer section on the Zoom platform for our participants. Okay. And uh, also for participants on uh, the YouTube and Facebook channel, you can begin to make use of uh, the comment session to bring in uh, your questions while uh, we receive the presentation of Ambassador uh, Sholabumi. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me. And um, to my senior colleagues, one again, I want to say a very big thank you because you, you, you made the journey easier. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. We can hear you. It has really made the journey easier because when we talk about livestock, uh, it's like talking about human being. There are a lot of things that we have in common. Um, livestock, too, they have a lot of things in common. So this afternoon, we want to talk about um, pig farming, a lucrative business in, in Nigeria. Um, the next slide. And the aim, uh, what we are going to be, the aim of, uh, of this is to actually um, expose us to the skills and knowledge um, to start and manage a successful uh, pig farm uh, business in Nigeria. Because of the time, we will not be able to know everything, but I'm going to show you the basic things you need to know, the basic things you need to do and understand. Pig is one of those um, animal that is underrated, but I want to tell you is the most um, consumed um, animal in the world and happens to be one of the neatest animal in the world. Can you believe that? <laughs> so today we are going to quickly look at um, how we can do this in, in Nigeria. You know, it's one of the leading agricultural business that um, if you have the time, the passion, and the zeal for it's something that you should try and, and consider to, to do. Next slide. And um, just like my senior colleague said the other time, uh, I want to come from the angle of business and, and that's why I love this platform uh, that says the business of agriculture. Every one of us here today, whatever the platform you, you, you're watching this from, the first thing you must have at the back of your mind is that um, you have to come to agriculture with the business mindset, see it as a business, not as a project, because that is when you can understand the input versus the output. I tell people, it's just like every other business you want to do. You need to put your plan together. You need to do your SWOT analysis. You need to you know, understand what it is you want to do. Because a lot of people who just have a pen, they have pig farms abandoned somewhere. So when you are talking about pig, like, oh, sir, but... A lot of people have, have abandoned their farm. They are not doing it again, this and that. But that's the reason is because they really don't go into it uh, as a business. They went into it as a, as a project. So uh, this afternoon, I will quickly just run us through the process and the procedures you know, around it. Let's start with farm and farm setup and infrastructure. Uh, farm setup and, infra and infrastructure for pig, pig can thrive anywhere. Pig can travel anywhere. So the first thing you need to do is actually look for uh, a very good location, a very good location. Like every other livestock, you need what we call proper, proper um, location that is also secure. 
you can't just um, operate in an open field or let me say an open space. Oh yes, I have this building or this property beside my house or this, I want to start my pig there. Yes, you can, but you make sure that you protect that um, area is covered to maybe fencing, whatever type of fencing you want to do. And you also have to look at um, uh, the drainage too. You have to look at the drainage, you have to look at access to clean water. My senior co colleague said something about bed the other time that, can you drink the water you are giving to your beds? Hmm. Yeah. Can you drink the water? So you need to look for a source of good water. You see that you want to sink borehole, you want to dog a well, whatever you need that. Then the proximity to, proximity to, to, to market. And um, uh, I always say this, especially when you see new investors coming on board and they want to buy property for their livestock farm, especially for pig farm. So they, they would like, oh yes, I need an acre of land that is a so, so, so amount of money. Uh, was that, yeah, go one hour away from, from the express, two hours. No, 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 no. If you have any challenge in your farm, how do you then assess, you know, even the main road? Now, talking about the markets too. Where is your market? I haven't done your SWOT analysis. You will have understand that what I wanted to do, this is where I want to sell it to. So when you understand the market you want to sell it to or the type of market you want to operate in, that would determine where you are going to set up your, your farm. So please put that at the back of your mind. And veterinary service too, uh, we, we approach this in two ways. We have some farmers that are well-trained. You train yourself about the basic things that your animal needs. And you can also put, you cannot begin to do this yourself. But if you don't have that knowledge, make sure that you have a vet or somebody very close to you, or you can easily call and assess that can take care of your animal. The next slide, please. So when we are building a pen, uh, pen construction, when we are building a pen, you need to look for a place that is well ventilated and very spacious. And that is why you will see today successful uh, pig farms. We have a uh, plantation too, where we plant um, um, plantain, pineapple, and the rest, because for, for pig farming, the waste, the same thing with birds, but for pig, the waste, you can apply this to your plants almost immediately. So we most times we say it's a zero waste kind of farming solution. The waste from the farm can go into your planting farm and your planting farm will just keep thanking you every time. Although you might not hear their voice, but when the leaves are green and beautiful, they, they are happy because you are giving them the waste from the pig. Uh, so you need to look for this. If you want to start small, Maybe you start on a plot of land, your pen must be there. You still have to put this plant there so that they can also attract a lot of oxygen, you know, down there, well ventilated. And um, you must be sure. Now, this is one of the places that people get it wrong when they are setting up a pen. Make sure you understand the, the regiment of constructing the pen very well, especially the floor, because these animals are very heavy and they have a very tight claw. So they tend to grow. On, on, on the floor. So your floor must be well, well, you know, uh, you know, seal up. It, because you just come to the farm one day and you discover that your pig has dug the hole, you know, and then the guy is ready or maybe the so or the, the boy is ready to get out of the farm. So make sure that you do this at, at, at the beginning because it's always very hard when you stock them and you now have a problem in the pen for you to now moving, begin to move them and, you know, fixing this problem is always very, very hard. So before you stock, make sure you do the right thing when you are doing your construction. The next slide, please. I want you to just share with us, look at different construction, different pen types. So you can start small. You can start with any type of it. Next slide, please. So here in, on the next slide, you will see different pictures now of, of, of uh, pens. You see different ones. So each of these pens are very, very good. You start with what you have the, you know, the, the financial you know, capacity to do. None of this is bad, but the only thing is they have more advantage than each other. So if you have the fund to do the one on my right, on my right, and you are thinking of doing the one on my left, and you won't be able to start anything. So you can start small and then begin to do what, as you then begin to understand the business, you can begin to take it to the next level in, when it comes to uh, this thing. It's a very lucrative animal because it gives you a lot of liters. And sometimes, you know, if you really understand this, these animals can give you, can actually give you a lot of liter twice in a year because it takes only four months and two days, four months, four days for a pig, you know, to litter. 
So we will get to that. Next slide, please. Let's go to feeding. Let's go to feeding and watering system. Make sure you put in place a very good, you know, feeding and watering system. As much as you think that pigs are dirty, no, they are not. They will not eat at the particular area where they put their feces. They will not. They will not. So you, when you are constructing, you must make sure that your feeding bro, your whatever system, the system of pen you use will determine the type of things you put in place. Like I told you about my, my, my pen. My pen, I have the nipple drinker. So this animal knows how to go and take water from the nipples. So they take water from the nipples. They are okay, the, the, the old stuff will close up. So the old place is very neat. We come in the morning, wash them off, clean them off, and everywhere is, is very good. So when you are putting this place, make sure, please, make sure that your feeding and your watering system is, is very, very good. And it is not really cumbersome. I require too much of human involvement. Please, re you reduce more of human involvement when it comes on. And another thing I want to say, when you are constructing your pen, the first thing you must put in place, the first thing you must put in place is the bow security. The bow security, you must have that at the back of your mind. Is A pen is not a cinema. It's not a cinema that everybody can just, you know, come in and enter into. You must have the ponds in front of your, uh, the entrance where if you or anybody that works there must dip their legs every time you have water and disinfectant there, it should be a practice in your farm. And nobody just coming, a stranger coming from somewhere, you know, entering into your pen is not, it's not really ad ad advisable. So we say bow security. That I'm is the next slide. Okay, I'm rounding up. You see, I'm, I'm moving very fast. And we still have a lot of things to talk about. So bow security, that comes under bow security. Now let's look at pig maintainers. You know, you need to understand your breed selection. Pre selection, we have different type of um, animal, large white, land race, the Jurok, the M sphere. We have the F1, F2, and all of these things. Like I said, this session cannot give us everything we need, but I believe we can always engage going forward. You need to look at your feeding and nutrition. You need to look at your health and vaccination, then the breeding and reproduction. Then you choose your niche. Do you want to be a partner or you want to go into breeding? You know, these are different parts of the business. We have over six different, you know, units of business, even within the peak pollution. We have different businesses uh, within that. Let's move to challenges because as good as it is, you know, as good as uh, beautiful as you, you see, and, and the picture I've been showing you, there are also challenges. The next slide please, there are challenges. We're talking about your, your disease. So your farm, I said the farm is very lucrative and, uh, and, and profitable, but if you are not careful, you can lose everything, you know, once, just like uh, my senior colleague talked about the birds too. So you are looking at, Disease control, you're looking about the marketing itself, you are looking about veterinary care, access to quality feed, that is of course, these are the major challenges. So you need to really understand all these things before you start. You need to know the type of disease that affects this particular species or variety of animal I want to use. Well, okay, I don't need this. And I want to go into fattening. This is the best animal I want to use, you know, to fatten, do up, you know, crossing these, this. So these things will probably might not be able to go because of our time. Now let's go to business and marketing. The next slide too. Um, book, you know, your bookkeeping, your let's say record keeping. The next slide is record keeping is crucial in, 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 in piggy farming. You need, because I told you that they litter very fast. You know, an animal can give you between seven and 15. So, and this can happen twice. You should be able to record them so that you don't have what we call inbreeding. Because as time goes on, you just lose control and the, the daughter really of a particular <laughs> okay, the, part, the daughter from a particular animal is also crossing with that. With that. So that is not uh, uh, is not good. Your financial management, marketing strategy, and the, the scale of your business. Uh, let's, I think the last slide, I'm, I'm rounding up now. I said, good luck, everyone. May you venture, may your venture thrive and um, contribute positively to, 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 to the economies of Nigeria. It's something that is very good. And I'm here to answer all your questions and put you on the right path when it comes to pig farming in Nigeria. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thank you, Ambassador Adeni Isolabumi. We appreciate uh, your presentation. Please accept our compliment for a good uh, and educative uh, presentation. Uh, no doubt, you have stimulated a lot of questions in the house. And at this point, I'd like to request that uh, participants on the question, participants on the Zoom platform should make use of the question and answer section.
to bring in your questions while participants on the YouTube and Facebook uh, platforms should make use of uh, the comment section to begin and to throw in your questions. And as we respond within uh, the limited time, please participant on uh, the Zoom platform, don't bring in your question on the chat section. We want to see it on the question and answer section. And we have a good number of them already. You have a good number of them already. Uh, we the first uh, that is a question talking about uh, opportunities for our youth in the poultry value chain. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Adelowo Labanji Joseph, we have uh, a youth population of 151 million uh, in Nigeria. This is a huge uh, resources that we can leverage on, make use of. We also know that we have uh, an unemployment uh, percentage of uh, 53%. We like to throw this question to you, sir. How do, for sustainability of uh, the poultry industry, there is need to integrate our youth in agriculture. So where are the opportunities for our youth in the poultry value chain? Mr. Dilowo. Thank you, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the poultry value chain, just like I briefly talked about earlier, uh, we have a very numerous um, uh, job opportunities, or let me say, um, possible uh, ways of making money from this uh, poultry value chain. Um, just like I told you, uh, majority of the people you see. When you visit, a, there's a particular section in the Baden, we call it Odoyole. Uh, if you visit that particular market, just behind Mo, uh, Mobi, you see that uh, on Mondays and um, Wednesday, Thursday, you see thousands of people going into, going into uh, poultry transaction from one level of uh, it. Uh, we have the DOC. We have people that sells DOC from those angles. We have people that sells, uh, that are going to veterinary drugs and the likes. We have uh, from movement of this DOC from matrix to uh, different farmers. That is another aspect of which, uh, which is part of the uh, uh, job opportunities we are talking about in terms of transportation, the logistics involved from actually to destinations or different destination, maybe distributor from distributor to different farmers. We have that for that. Also on the produce themselves, uh, even if you are not uh, the type that could uh, do the broilers or the noilers or the layers of this world. On the produce, we have a lot of people that, that, that position themselves in egg distribution across board. They go to, from farm to farm to get eggs and within with 50 to 100 or 200,000, they could start a business in egg distribution. We have those that uh, who do uh, uh, in uh, transportation for broiler from farms to the abattoirs for slaughter. Then also we have a uh, frozen food uh, 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 distribution channels where you could be even with just two or three freezers and a very good uh, uh, location, you could have your own um, outlet to sell protein, uh, there's a, a poultry product, the, the broiler products, you could sell this there. We have so many, it depends on where you decide to position yourself. Uh, I think uh, on the chat uh, uh, channel, I saw the, Small order calculator, small, small order calculator that has been shared, the mother units calculator that has been shared. Even these are what we could do. We could raise 200 beds, we could raise 400, uh, four weeks broiler, four weeks cockroach, four weeks noiler, five weeks noiler. These are what we could come in, and you don't need to break the bank for all this. You could use an abandoned building, maybe you have a room that is spared. You could use that and raise your bed, maybe 50, 20, 30, depending on your capacity. These are opportunities we have. The, 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 the opportunities we have in the poultry industry is numerous. It's just all about you positioning yourself, either at the, the pre, uh, pre the before the airing, the rearing, even other um, agro highlight products 
like the wood shaving, like um, the, the, the chemicals used in disinfecting. We have people selling that also. You see, it depends on where you are trying to position yourself, how you see the opportunity that really matters and what you intend to do. You look at, just like I said, the target market. You look at, okay, what do I want to do? Who are my customers? How do I go about it? What do I need to do? And where do I need to go to? With minimal or little uh, uh, guidance, you can plug yourself in one aspect of this uh, value chain. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Adelowo Labanji Joseph. Uh, very quickly, there is uh, another question again, saying with the rising uh, cost of uh, feed, poultry feeds uh, in the country, how do we uh, manage our costs of production? How do we reduce our cost of feed regime and still get uh, optimal output? I think, I think uh, it is not cost of feed he's trying to talk about. He's trying to say, cost of uh, production, uh, if I get that question right. Uh, you see, uh, one of the things that uh, that happens in poultry production is that you have some factors that you can't really change. You have done some that are fixed in terms of uh, DOC purchase. You don't have any, uh, any influence on that. You don't have influence on the price of feed. But one thing that is very crucial at this time, uh, which of course, the trying moment is temporary, it's not permanent. Uh, we have to employ what we call efficiency. Efficiency in terms of your management, in with, uh, feed wastage, you understand? You need to be efficient in every areas of uh, the business. You need to be efficient in what you're feeding. If you can buy in bulk, then it reduces your cost of, uh, your cost of production. If you can now, okay, if you have about you can go into joint ventures, which most of the people don't uh, tend to ignore. I know at times when you look at uh, purchasing in bulk, it reduces your cost of production. Uh, if you have about two, three, four farmers within the same locality that you could um, come together and purchase some of these inputs in bulk, it reduces your cost of, we just have to be efficient in this. Cost of transportation, if I'm, if I'm having 200 beds and I want to transport from, maybe from Ibadan to Lagos, the cost of transportation will be high. But if I have about two, three other farmers that we are making up to 1,000 or 2,000 beds, definitely our cost of transportation will reduce. Likewise for the cost of feed also, you are transporting from a particular source to your farm location. If you are transporting only for yourself, the cost will, you know, in, in, in poultry production, we have some fixed costs. The, the number of uh, worker that you use to work in a 1,000 capacity pen is still the same for 500, for 200, 400. So mm. if you are coming in together as a joint ventures, doing having a very good uh, MOU for you all, uh, for all members that, that, that is involved, then you have a very good understanding that you are doing it in bulk. The variables still remain the same. You maximize everything. It's all about efficiency. So oh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, beautiful response. They are spot on for us. You have opened up opportunities in the poultry value chain. There are opportunities in the input sector having to do with uh, DOC, opportunities for vaccinations, veterinary care, transportation, logistics. There's opportunity to produce meat and egg. We have uh, also, opportunities in the processing uh, chain, the habitat, the frozen food, and uh, ultimately reducing uh, our cost of uh, production in poultry business has to do with our efficiency and management of the business. We appreciate you. And I can see that uh, also on uh, the Q&A platform, you have been responding yourself and uh, Ambassador Deshola, Adeni Ishola has been responding to some questions that are ongoing. So we move straightly to few questions to Ambassador Deni Sholabumi. Yes, we could see so many efforts that has been put into your presentation. And uh, there is something that is key to our youth, like uh, the man in the poultry business is also key here for the pig. Pigrill uh, venture. 
beyond producing pigs, where are the opportunities for our youth in the piggly value chain? Where are the opportunities, sir? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, everybody will not come into production. Uh, the, the value chain is also very, very massive. So let's start taking them one after the other. Those in production, uh, those that will come into uh, marketing, you know, those that will also come into the processing, uh, it can be processed to a lot of uh, a lot of products, uh, sausages, um, even opening your own um, pork shop is yeah. something that is just coming up now and it's making a lot of money. Let me shock you. Uh, there's a pork shop in Abiyokuta. And what happened there is they only slaughter on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And by the time you get there by 11, you can't get any animal again. And they have a WhatsApp group where they now say, oh, we are going to slaughter so so keji today. And people, they start booking ahead. So it let me eat like, ah, so a lot of people consume pork. This is a kind of, I don't know, the kind of things that go on in the pork business thing. Every time the guy will just call us, I said, I don't know. I, from three animals, we are doing four animals now. We are slaughtering five animals. So you can have your own pork shop and you start small. You might not even slaughter. You can start sending a message to people and say, we want to slaughter so so, so time. Will you be ready? And you will be amazed that people will book ahead and, and you make money. You can also do this online too. A lot of people sell meat online now, both you know, fresh and, and you know, processed meat. So you have, can have that. You can also have you know, um, a breeding house where you spend a lot of money into the breeding, you bring in good animal, quality animal, and you become a breeder that uh, the grown out people now come back to you and buy the breed from you. All they just need to do is get a boy from you, get some so for you, and they go back to their farm and begin to, to month. So there are a lot of opportunities across the value chain. Marketing is a niche too that we need to then begin to look at. Then we need also to begin to talk about alternative source of things across board because Nigeria happens to be a country where whatever I think we stock with, we always see you no know, stock, just like what we are doing with beef and with um, poultry. And when you talk about poultry, like my boss said, people tend to see only chicken. You know, very few people don't even look at other things like the dog, like the like the turkey and the rest. So for, for pig, the value chain is massive. Just be creative about it. Then you start small and you know and, and expand. There's a lot of opportunity there. Thank you very much, sir. Ambassador Adeni Isolabumi. You have uh, opened a, a, a very big uh, window in us, particularly in the area of a pork shop, opportunities again to open breeding houses. And uh, we there is need to begin to consider alternative source of protein. Yes, there is a uh, another question for you. I can see that you have really been attending to questions on the Q and Hill uh, angle at that point. There's another question from you for you here, sir. How will you compare the economic benefits of pigs? That is looking at the EOP economics of production for pigs with uh, other livestock. Can uh, we uh, Take informed decision for settling down for pigry venture as against uh, other livestock. Is it that profitable compared to other livestock? Yes, uh, pig is profitable because of the the, the litter size in terms of um, then the the conversion to the feed conversion ratio is very high, and then um, they tend to stay on ma all manners of um, input. When I say input feed now. For them, they, they can really eat a lot of things that other animals cannot eat. You know, they can really consume some high sold waste and some other, you know, farmyard waste too. So you can they can survive on that till when. Okay, for example, there is a there is a language or a term we use in the agribusiness sector, and my senior colleague will be able to tell. He said something like that about poultry the other time. We say if you are a salary earner, and you don't have enough of money, keep somewhere. Don't go into livestock. Because these animals, they are very, very, very crazy. They will punish you. The same thing with catfish. You know, you don't give them a feed for one day, they will punish you for one week. The catfish, poultry, and the rest, they won't give you the eggs. And, and uh, but when it comes to pigry, you something is not coming. You can still like have some other you know input or waste somewhere to still put them in shape until when you have the feed, 
you know, maybe there is a transport issue, there is one problem there, they can still stay two, three, four, five days on another source of feed, unlike other livestock. You can't just change your feed. And now, then again, when you look at an animal, one animal that can give you between seven to 15 in four months, two days, four months, four days, and can win this animal in another six weeks, you can practice, just do it again. So one animal can give you almost 20 to 40 in a year. Okay. Thank Apart you. from rabbit, there's no other animal that can do that. Thank you. Yes, uh, very quickly, as I uh, will bring it to random, that is uh, a question from the Facebook. Are there seamless ways to get uh, funding, to get funding, be it a grant or a loan, at a minimum interest rate to run a profitable piggly business in Nigeria? Okay, uh, what I tell uh, my youth at my boot camp is um, money is not number one when it comes to anything in the agri business sector. It's not money. You won't get a loan to start a business, you get a loan to grow a business. Even if I'm your brother, I will never give you money to start your business. You start as much as what you can afford. Then when I see that you are doing fine, then you can now begin to assess. Because if you want to assess, what do you write? What do you say is your experience? So it's like you want to learn how to drive. You don't have a, a, a car. And Mr. Peter Pupola is your brother. You went to him and said, Mr. Peter, please give me the key of your only car. I want to get somewhere. I will crash Mr. Peter's car and I will still not know how to drive. So most of the time, the younger generation should know that when you are coming to agribusiness, come with the idea and start small. I say, think big, start small and scale fast. So loan is not the first thing, except if uh, Mr. Labangi has another package where they give people money for poetry. For <laughs> agribusiness. Actually, uh, just like you said, uh, the, the, most important thing is, the most important thing is to start small. Um, that I know, uh, I know of um, NISA, I know of uh, the CBN loan that, that, that has to do with um, uh, maybe about a single digit between nine to 10% uh, interest rate for NISA, which I don't know how easy it is to assess it. But one of the things that I just, like I said, uh, which we underestimate a lot is all about partnership. Partnership can help you to stand on your feet. Uh, you know, you can start with a partnership. Okay, how, what do you have? What do you have as a, maybe two, three friends coming together, having a very good MOU and coming together with that little fund and you start from somewhere. And when you are, when you think you have that standing enough and you think uh, you can stand on your own, then you can pull out and, you know, try and do something. But that starting small partnership could be another point, another way out which you could do. You can, you can partner with an existing farmer that you know that is trustworthy. You know, you, that, that is a condition also which you need to really look at. You can partner with an existing farmer. Okay. You can partner okay. with your friend also. Okay. Yes, uh, thank you for those uh, beautiful comments. Two questions, one for each uh, panelist. Ambas ambassador, that is a question from, again from the Facebook, Ambassador. Can I fatten pig for sale the way we fatten other livestock for sale? Very briefly, sir. I, I said it. I, I said it. That is another niche, you know. You, you go into fattening. So it's, it's, you can fatten pig. And okay. it's also a very good business, okay. um, especially for those that also want to go into slaughter. Most of the time, we bring in winners at a particular uh, age. We bring them in, we fatten them, and we slaughter them or we sell them out to those people that want to slaughter. Yes. You can fat in any, any livestock, I, I, I believe so. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, to you, Mr. Adelawala Banji, a question again from the Facebook. From your experience, can I start a poultry business with about 500,000? If yes, which area of production, which area of production will you advise I go into? Yes, you can start with 500,000, you could start with 300, 200,000. I think on the, on the, on the chat, on the webinar chat, I think uh, the, the Noela chat has been sent out, uh, the calculator. You can start with Noela. And just like uh, Mr. Ambassador Denny said the other time, Noela is one for neighbors that could also strive on your kitchen waste. You could feed them with your fruit and the likes. 
even on extensive uh, system of rearing, we have a lot of uh, fish farmers that just put some uh, noiler bears after uh, five weeks of brooding, they, they just put them in the open place and they, 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 they are good to go. You just feed them maybe once in a day and they are good. You can feed them with, you can feed them with um, the fruits, you can feed them with, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, this okay. fruit, uh, kitchen waste and the likes. Okay. They, they are rugged based and with 500,000, you can even do extensive system of rearing with 500,000 and you'll be doing about uh, two to, 300 to 500 beds, and you'll be making a lot of money from other, uh, from Noila, Noila production, which thank is you. both meat and egg production. Again, thank you, sir. Again, for you, Mr. Olabanji Joseph, the price of a bag of feed has increased by over 200% in the last five years, and the price of eggs and meat has not increased. The number of poultry farmers have also declined over time. Is the poultry industry crumbling? Thank you very much. The poultry industry is challenge, which could be overcome. Uh, just like you, uh, you stated that the price of feed has skyrocketed, which is true. And also the price of uh, eggs for finished product has also increased. Uh, before now, we used to sell eggs 600, 800. Then it moved down to 1,000 to... Hello? We can't hear you anymore. Hello? They are just the traditional farmers. A lot of farmers are taking the step higher by uh, doing some packaging. You know, mm -hmm. go by supplying supermarket and the likes, and you won't sell at the same farm gate you are selling. So it's all about who your target market is and what you're, and where, where you are selling to. So it's all about what are you selling? What are you buying? What is your input? What is your profit margin? Yes, we are challenged, but the coaching industry will continue to strive and will get it better. It can only it can, 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 it can only get better. Thank you very much, sir. The two panelists, Mr. Adelo Wolabanji Joseph and the Ambassador Adeni Isolabumi. It's been an engaging and interactive session with you. We thank you for a very good presentation. I would like to say, please accept our compliment for a very good and enriching uh, presentation. We look forward for more collaborations in the, the possible time as uh, we reach out to you. I can see that a lot of our audience are already asking for your contacts. A good number of us, we need uh, more support uh, in the area of uh, mentoring and uh, in the area of uh, capacity building. You are welcome. Your presence is not taken for granted. We appreciate you. It's our pleasure to have you in our midst today. And also to uh, our dear participants, we are happy having you in our midst today. We are not taking you for granted. You could see that it's been a very enlightening. We want you to take advantage of a link that we the circulated now. We want to hear your feedback, how you we react to this uh, session. Uh, a, a link will be sent to participants on uh, the YouTube and Facebook uh, platforms now. Please uh, kindly respond to the poll in terms of your feedback. We need your feedback to improve uh, on these uh, sessions and the subsequent one that may be coming tomorrow. And also for our participants uh, on the uh, uh, Zoom platform, yeah, a link will be sent uh, very shortly. We want to have uh, your feedback on uh, this session. We can do that within the next uh, two, three minutes. Can we have the poll on now? We can take um, expectations in the chat room, please. Thank okay, you. yes. While... Uh, we are waiting for that. We can also take expectations in the chat box. We have the chat box for participants on the Zoom platform, and we have the comment section for feedback, participants on the YouTube. Sorry, not expectations, feedback. Feedback, okay. Yeah, for participants on uh, the YouTube and uh, Facebook uh, platform, we can have uh, your feedback within the next uh, few minutes. 
two minutes, I say, because our time is uh, fast spent, I will need to close now. Yes. Yes, we are already getting a song saying thank you, sirs, to everyone. Okay. Yeah, we are getting claps to our panelists. You have done a beautiful and excellent job. Yeah, we can uh, see some. Uh, Science people say actions speak louder than voice. We are seeing some actions here. Yes, uh, we need the slides. Yeah, the organizers will look into that. Okay. Okay. Yes, I really enjoyed both guests. I will love to have their numbers, okay? This has been very informative session. Thank you. We appreciate you. Yes, we are getting claps. And that goes to tell our panelists that uh, you have done uh, beautifully well this afternoon. We are impressed with uh, your presentation. We can see a lot of effort that was put into this to make a very uh, stimulative uh, presentation. We appreciate you, yes. There is a comment here. The training is okay. It's awesome, okay, okay. Yes, we note that. And uh, we, I think we can uh, round up with that. We can uh, respond to some uh, other pressing and personal comments and questions afterwards. We like uh, to appreciate our panelists uh, once again, Mr. Adelowo Labanji Joseph, the National Sales Manager of uh, Amobile Nigeria Limited, and uh, Ambassador Adeniyi Cholabumi, founder and co green Impact Africa Initiative. We also want to appreciate uh, our audience, our participants on the, the Zoom platform, on the YouTube platform, on the Facebook platform. It's been wonderful having you in uh, with us here. We are pleased to have you. And we also want to appreciate uh, our sponsor, uh, very specially the United Nations Private Sector Advisory Group, PSAG, we also want to appreciate uh, the anchor of uh, this uh, particular business of agriculture, 3.0 cluster five, the New Nigeria Foundation. We are grateful to you and uh, we look forward for a continuous uh, support in building the capacity of Nigerians in the agricultural value chain. Please stay tuned uh, for uh, the business of agriculture session for tomorrow to Business of Agriculture Masterclass 3.0 will be rounding up for this uh, third edition tomorrow. And I'd like to assure you that uh, there are more very pressing, informative, and educative uh, sessions that uh, will uh, be for us like a tip in the highest bag. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Please let's put, uh, you know, give, as I put our hands together, or give a round of applause um, for even our moderator. You know, someone said in the comment section that moderator, you too, thank you, you know, as well. So, thank you. Lower said the poultry uh, um, platform, uh, the poultry industry rather is challenged but can be overcome. So, I noted that I took it and said, okay, maybe. Uh, the internet services for today, you know, was quite challenging, but we can overcome it and we hope to do better uh, tomorrow as well. Please, can you hear me? Because um, the internet has, you know, really, really affected. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, you, you are talking, it's loud and clear. Thank you so much. Um, to Ambassador Shalabune and also to Mr. Adelo. It was a brilliant and interesting and very, very rich session. Sorry we had to also hurry you up at some point uh, because of our time, you know, so that um, we can all move on to other um, business of the day. I see you're sharing your 
uh, phone numbers. Please make sure you do your due diligence as well. We encourage networking and uh, collaboration, but please let us also do uh, due diligence. I know you're. Um, <laughs> But we trust our participants. So with all due respect, so please. Anyway, tomorrow's session, we realize that there's been a lot of questions or we see that there's been a lot of questions around finance. Yes, it's all about the money. So the first session for tomorrow is actually on agrofinancing. And we're going to be having um, a USAID Feed the Future consultant on, Mr. Nosa Osunde, he's the principal consultant of um p3 consulting so he'll be on tomorrow likewise we'll be having uh the um value addition session that's on the business of agro processing and value addition from farms to brands i know ambassador shalabumi was talking about um you know um having sausages out of uh, pigs and all different things that agro produ products can be, uh, you know, processed into, so that there is increased. It's more competitive, you know, more or less. So please let us join. Let us invite our friends and colleagues as usual. And to wrap up the session is the business of agriculture and ocean of opportunities. Where we will be diving not into Atlantic Ocean or the Indian Ocean, but into different opportunities in the aquaculture, uh, you know, value chain. I want to thank everyone that has joined today and stayed on right from the first session in the morning on business of uh, nutrition and lifestyle to the second one on markets and uh, agro market linkages and agro logistics and also to the third session of the day on animal husbandry there's been a lot of questions on uh, share, sharing the presentations very rich presentations which we really appreciate you for putting in your time experience and effort they are being shared right now on in the chat section for uh, our participants on youtube and facebook thank you for joining what we would do is to um, send it to everyone that has registered there is an attendance form a link to an attendance form that has been shared please complete the form and then we'll be able to send these materials to your um, email addresses the excel calculator uh, that was also shared during the poultry session we've shared it here on on Zoom, and they will also be shared on youtube and uh, facebook via your email addresses so please just make sure that you complete the form someone says in the comment section i can't wait for the aquaculture uh, session tomorrow thank you so much we're glad that you're looking forward to it and we hope to um, also have you on okay someone is saying where was the excel calculator shared we will be share Never mind, just stay on. It's the last session for the day. So like we did yesterday, we we'll try to unmute some people as well so that we can have uh, some form of engagement, um, you know, as well. The session is ended. Thank you so much for attending. We are happy to, you know, have you on. But if you want to uh, network or speak, we would allow you one after the other because it's the end of the day. Uh, Mr. Peter Popola would also want to thank you. It was a lovely, engaging, and enriching session. Thank you so much, you know, for for committing, you know, yourself and your time to this. To this, thank you. So maybe we can hear from Amin Sanusi. Labilam. I hope I pronounced your name right and didn't murder it. Hopefully not. Okay, I've asked you to unmute. I see your hand up. Would you want to say a word or two? Okay, I see Joan Etakobuno. Okay, let me allow Joan to talk while we wait for Amit Sanusi. Joan, please unmute your mic. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for this opportunity to actually learn from the wealth of experience that our um, facilitators has been giving to us. Like, especially for me, I was actually, I registered because of the nutrition, um, business of food and nutrition lifestyle. I actually, and I was really, really impacted with knowledge. My question now is this, like, is there any opportunity for us to actually get to meet these people 
in real time maybe um um <clears throat> get to be trained by them and also will it be possible for this platform to actually give us a certificate something to actually show that we've actually acquired this knowledge because here in nigeria we know that um things are really really not um regulated but then if we have this certificate that shows that we actually participate it will help us to like um speak or give out our experiences with authority since it is not necessary that we must we need to go to school to get our uh, our knowledge in order to serve our community better but if this if it is possible for the platform to actually give us um certificate of participation it will help us to say okay we'll tell our community people that we are not just coming from anywhere we are actually trained by people and this is our proof that we are actually trained. So we have authority to actually give out this knowledge that we're actually mm -hmm. giving out. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Joan, for your uh, feedback, for your questions as well, or your inquiries. Uh, we're glad that you enjoyed the session on um, nutrition and lifestyle. I'm sure, well, I did too. So thank you so much. On meeting the um, facilitators, or the resource persons one-on-one. -on -one. Um, well, we don't have a platform for that yet. Anything can happen, uh, but we don't have a platform for that yet. But you can reach out to them on their social media platforms. For example, Miss Showe Mimo uh, Okwe Farms on Instagram. She's on Instagram, so you can reach out to her um, at Okwe Farms underscore Olushola Showe Mimo. And then there is uh, Mrs. Foluke Ola Adedokun as well on IG. That's um, at Fruity World on Instagram. So I'm sure. And then LinkedIn, they're also on LinkedIn. So please uh, reach out to them and hopefully you'll be able to miss them on certificates. So the business of the agriculture masterclass is driven by the private sector um, agribusiness. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the private sector. Uh, I, I was talking a bit you know, ahead of myself, the private sector advisory group, uh, Nigeria Cluster 5, which are into agribusiness or which work or, you know, operate in the agribusiness and the manufacturing sector. So um, there is no certificate for this masterclass. I'm sorry to say, you know, there's, we, we acknowledge, you know, your feedback. It will also be part of the feedback that we will be reviewing and look into it for subsequent uh, masterclass sessions. So um, sorry to, well, do I say disappoint you? But, uh, you know, the feedback is taken, is well taken and we will review for the next uh, session. Thank you so much. Um, quickly would um, call on Mr. Caleb Wanga. I think he's joining from Kenya also. Mr. Caleb Wanga, would you want to speak? Yes. I don't know whether it's good afternoon or still good morning in Nigeria. I'm not very sure. Okay, so it's 2.34, so it's good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, it's around 4.30 p.m. Actually, yesterday at the beginning of the session, I I, floated, I asked a question, but unfortunately, the key discussion had not begun in, 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 uh, in earnest. What I asked was about the kind of fertilizers that uh, we are using in agriculture because we hear some claims that some could end up destroying the soil completely to the point that we might not have proper agricultural production in the future. I don't know whether there could be specific experts in the forum that are uh, keen to, to help me understand this kind of thing, because this is part of the things that are happening even in part of East Africa. The government are introducing new fertilizers for agriculture, and we hear that some of them could have very great impact on the microorganisms that are in the soil. Thank you so much from Nairobi. Thank you so much, Mr. K uh, Caleb. Well, I was going to say Mr. Kenya. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Caleb, for your um, um, question. Well, we have some agribusiness specialists in person of our um, resource persons. I don't know if they want to speak to that. I know the issue of fertilizer was dealt with at the first session yesterday and also on uh, the organic, um, with the organic uh, farming specialists this morning. Um, 
Ambassador Shalabumi, I'm very sorry to put you on the spot, but is it something you would want to uh, speak to? Or we just, you know, consult the fertilizer specialists, uh, for lack of a better word for me now, and then we can um, give, you know, give you a response to that later on. Ambassador Shola, please, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Good afternoon. Yes. I can hear you, madam. Okay, I was asking that. Is it something you could speak, you would want to speak to the, the, the inquiry yes, on yes. fertilizers? Okay, thank you. Yes. So um, when we talk about, um, let's say, nutrients for the soil, it's just like um, feeding for the livestock. So it depends on what you do. And um, they, in agribusiness, there's um, the opportunity for you to choose what we call your lane. Uh, you might decide to go um, organic, and you can also need to, you can also go synthetic. You now, uh, it depends on what you are growing and um, the requirements. We we'll call it the the plant protocol. What that plant requires. We have some plant that requires nitrogen. You know why we have some food bearing um, plants that requires you know. Some other things. So once you understand what your plants require, what you are doing, what they require, it's always in two options. It's either synthetic or natural. And that is where the waste from what we talk about today, the feather and the fall, that's where their waste also come into place. Because you can compose the waste, you can make different things from the waste. We do what we call fertilizer tea. I can soak up a dry poultry waste in a drum for seven days, cover it up, soak it off, and then begin to filter it and dilute it with other water to spray on my vegetable food. I can do the same thing with my, I told you that I would rather even take my poultry waste, dry them a bit and introduce them into my plantain farm. So I, we can choose not to, you know, um, to do a particular thing for the health of our plant. Um, your part, your land or where you are farming is yours. The, the business is yours. So that's why we call it the business of agriculture. Nobody will come and tell you the best way for you to bake your bread. You can decide to put butter, you can decide to put more eggs. So at the end of the day, if you do the right thing, you get the right result. And if you do, you know, you go shortcut, then the result will also be there. You understand, sir? So we, there is no regulation yet um, in the area of type of fertilizer we use, except if a government, uh, government are very proactive and say, no, no, we don't want this type of fertilizer in our country or in our region or in our county, because um, Kenya is also my second home. You know, so if, if governments are proactive about that and they can say, oh, because of the issue that has happened, we don't want this again, yes, but it is a business. And I operate my business because I want to add value to the economy and also make some money for myself. I, I hope I, I, I'm able to um, you know, answer your question. Okay, Mr. Caleb, we hope um, Ambassador Shalabumi was able to answer your question. Um, I don't know, but he's not um, responding, so that's fine. We'll go to the next person. Uh, we have two more and we'll be done, you know, for, for the day. Um, Mr. Labanji, did you want to add something? I see your hand is up. Oh, I, I don't think my hand is up, but I guess uh, <laughs> okay. uh, Ambassador Shola has really answered that. But the only thing I'll be adding to is just that, you know, uh, just for some areas, some particular uh, locality where there are laws about what and what your, your produce from farm, what type of fertilizer you apply to. You know, a lot of people go organic and they use the manuals from animal waste or poultry waste, uh, animal waste in general, in quotes. You know, talk about uh, manuals from uh, the pig, the dunk from cows and from protein uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to boost the nutrient requirement in their, in their soil. Why you have some that go synthetic, you use, you use of uh, urea and uh, uh, phosphate uh, compound in which we are used to in Nigeria in building our own nutrient requirement in the soil. So it depends on what you are looking at. It depends on the market you are targeting. So market will tell you that they don't want um, a particular produce 
used uh, by where a synthetic fertilizer are being used. So it depends on where you are selling your produce to. That determines uh, the kind of fertilizer you'll be applying on your produce or your soil. So let me quickly also contribute to that. Um, just a second. We also use this word organic, um, organic, organic. We use it a lot, loosely. Um, <laughs> because I'm using the uh, uh, waste from animal does not make uh, my farm organic. Because most of these animals too, the feeds and some of the things they consume, you know, the drugs and every of those things too, yes. they are not so obvious say that they are organic. Now, I, I use the word natural. Before you can use the word organic, there must have been certification. There must have been certification. A body should have checked your farm and understand, okay, yes. It is not the manure alone or the nutrient alone that makes your farm organic. There are other practices and protocols that you need to put in place that makes a farm fit to now have that badge of being an organic farm. So we, for people, because this is a learning platform, you know, in Nigeria, we use that word loosely. Yeah, my farm is organic farm. My farm is no, 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 no. Well, you are just practicing. You are just trying to go, you know, natural somewhere or the other. Because there are a lot of Thank things. You know, so to yeah. yeah, very, very valid. I, and that was actually, you know, discussed at the uh, session this morning on business of uh, nutrition and lifestyle when Miss Olusholasho and Mimo was, you know, was talking. So thank you so much. Well, we have two more people. Please be brief. It's part of the bonus we say <laughs> on, on this session for those who stayed on longer. So we just ask that you quickly ask your question or make your comment. Okay, Mr. Caleb says, thank you for the answer. So that's uh, noted. We can only take Mr. Oyetade, Oloyede and Omonigo Otanocha. Thank you very much. And then we wrap up. Please be brief. Uh, this is just a bonus segment. Okay. Um Thank you for uh, the wonderful sessions we had so far. Now, I asked the question earlier that Mr. Olabanji responded to in the question and answer section. But what happened is I'm a poultry farmer and it's actually what I've been experiencing throughout this year. This year now I've run about five cycles, about four or five cycles of gorilla production. And the way it is when I raise, I do sell to people who buy him bulk. This day, I've even been processing my, my chicken and I sell as frozen to people buy in bulk. But my experience is that the cost of production keeps increasing. The cost of feed and all of that keeps increasing, but we don't get to sell at an increased price. In fact, in my home case in Ibadan here, the I, the, what I sold in January, I've not been able to sell up to that. I mean, in this, my selling price as such today. Whereas the cost of production keeps increasing, my feeding keeps increasing, DOC keeps increasing. It was until yesterday that I got to know that AMO have some kind of of take agreement that you sign them with you, they release DOC to you at a, at a fixed price. And I'm still discussing with the sale rep, where we are trying to wire on some things out. So what I'm asking please is- Please ask your you question. Pay, yes, please go straight to the point. Thank yes, you. how do you stay profitable in this kind of situation? Your cost okay. of production increases for people like us that raise fairly large number of bets as it were, but you don't get to sell at a price that reflects that increase in your cost of production, you understand? Throughout this year now, I've been selling at a lower price to what I sold in January, but my cost of production has greatly increased. So I decided not to stock for now. Thank you, Mr. Oyetade. I'm very sorry I have to cut in, but because of time, we can, uh, can Mr. Delawa in 30 seconds respond to yeah, that? Yeah, thank you very thank much, Mr. Oyetade. I, I quite understand uh, the angle you are coming from. Uh, just like I said, if you look at the, the economics of production, which I shared earlier, it was just a typical uh, one that is being used, uh, a realistic model that we use also. And if you look at it uh, for every uh, production, there's always an agreed um, buy by price. So if you look at from the onset, you have to know if uh, this 
economies of production will work for you or not. Looking at um, your source of fund also, you know, for you selling at a lower price after production, it is one of the mistakes that most farmers do. Most times you don't take into, uh, into, uh, into cost uh, what is what is your cost of production, where you are selling to the target market and the problem. Uh, but in, in terms of when you're having the tango, you said you're speaking with a particular rep, I think you need to sit down and look at the economics of production before you go into that production. Also, if you are using the middlemen in, uh, in negotiating, even the fact that you are selling in pork, it does, they, they tend to cut your, uh, your, your, your profits. If you have opportunity of reaching out to companies that process directly, I think that will increase your chances or your probably your, your, your profitability. Try and reach out to direct and try as much as possible to cut down the middlemen. If you if you need more guidance or anything, you can. Uh, I think I shared my uh, my number on the group. You can easily reach out to me, which I can help you all. Thank you very much. And lastly, uh, we'll be asking Omonigo Otanucha. Omonigo Otanucha. Hello. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much to the New Nigerian Foundation. I am from, um, I'm calling from Uwe, um, Delta State, uh, Federal Investor of Petroleum Resources. I want to commend you for the efforts you've made. Mine is a comment and offer of support. Uh, we did a biogas project all over Nigeria in 2016 to 2018, 2018 to 2020. And the support we're offering is um, for those who are into animal production or uh, plants, Processing, we we could support with uh, with students uh, projects that uh, that can help you in cutting down cost of operations in terms of uh, biogas to energy, and also uh, farm implements that can help your production. For example, your feeding uh, implements for poultry farmers, and uh, uh, in exchange, we send our students to you for IT uh, internship. So these are these are our support uh, to support this good initiative that you've. Uh, made a very good point of. I'm in mechanical engineering, so anything that has to do with machines, uh, farm implements, uh, we'll be ready to support uh, with that. And also, if there's a community of practice, uh, you can connect us. I've, I've tried to, all the names, uh, facilitators, and some of the people who ask questions here, I've also reached out to you on LinkedIn uh, to connect to you. So I want to thank you for this wonderful project. Uh, uh, it's something that we need to do. And uh, we're also interested in the waste that comes out of all these processes. So if there are means in every cluster, say Lagos State, and we can establish clusters, even in Quara State, we can connect them for an area where they can have a processing zone where people can come with their produce and process uh, to add value to it before they can uh, send, send off to those the end users. So God bless you. Amen. And you too. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Omonigo. We'll be in touch with you. I believe you have um, uh, you registered before joining, so we'll be in touch with you. You could also send an email to PSAGNG Secretariat, PSAGNG Secretariat at um, gmail.com, and you could contact, uh, you could send an email, and you could copy contact at NNFNG. Dot org. We would share those links in the um, chat room, and you'll be able to. We'll be able to continue the conversation from there. Thank you so much. Okay, bonus session over. It's time to go home. So thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining today. We would like to especially thank our facilitators, our resource persons. It's been a very enriching session. To everyone that has joined. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. The drivers of the Business of Agriculture Masterclass is the Private Sector Advisory Group, Nigeria Cluster 5. We would like to thank them for this initiative in promoting the Sustainable Goal 2, that is Zero Hunger and Sustainable Go uh, Development Goal 12, Responsible uh, Consumption and Production. Thank you so much. We hope to see you tomorrow, 9 a.m., uh, where we'll be talking about the money, agrofinancing. So join us tomorrow, 9 a.m. in the, uh, well, towards midday, 11 o'clock at, uh, uh, for the uh, business of agro processing and value addition. 
and also the business of aquaculture. We we'll display them right after uh, you know I'm done, and I think I am. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheers. Thank you, Ambassador Shala. It's a pleasure. Same here, same here, boss. Same here. Please, let's contact. Um, I, I have a project around Noila and the local full and fowls. Okay. It, 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 uh, the, your number hands with 074, right? Yes, yeah, double zero seven four. Okay, okay. Zero is zero six five two double zero seven. Okay, I have that. We can easily chat up and yeah, we're looking at an open uh, open feed of no We have love within our soul, fire in our bones. We've got everything it takes to make it here. There's much more within our soil, more than just our 